Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome back to my course uh, aspects of biochemical engineering. In the last couple of lectures, I tried to discuss the immobilized enzyme system because uh, initially I told that uh, what are the what do you mean by immobilized enzyme, and I told that immobilized enzyme is nothing but uh, confined or you know fixation of the cell on the solid matrix, and then. I try to discuss what is the advantage of using uh, this uh, immobilized enzyme system. Then, <coughs> then uh, I I also try to tell you that uh, that uh, what are the different immobilization techniques we have, uh, and uh, what are the methodology on the basis of that you can select the immobilized immobilization technique. And one thing I I highlighted that all immobilization technique is not suitable for all enzymes because whenever we select any kind of immobilization technique we shall have to first select the criteria they want the because whether we are looking for easy preparation or we we we, we are looking for strong bonding between the solid matrix and the enzymes and all this criteria is very important and uh, during this lecture we emphasize on couple of things one is the characteristics of the solid matrix and uh, that plays very important role and we also discuss about the porous and non porous solid matrix how it affects in the immobilized enzyme system now today we already discuss the um, kinetics of enzymatic reaction and in this kinetics of that uh, uh, enzymatic reaction we we assume the enzymes they are freely interact with the substrate so we consider that as a homogeneous system the whenever we consider that immobilized system i, I told you uh, previously that uh, usually the uh, enzymes are fixed on a solid matrix now solid matrix is insoluble in water so uh, and your your substrate is actually present in the soluble form so as soon as even your enzymes is soluble when you fix on the solid matrix the things will be insoluble and so there is a presence of two different phases one is solid and the liquid so this is an example of the heterogeneous reaction system now in case of heterogeneous system that what we have we have uh, your your bulk you have the substrate the substrate has to diffuse from the bulk to the surface of the solid matrix and where the enzymes are located and let the reaction take place and after the reaction is over that whatever product formation is there that product will diffuse from the surface to the uh, to the bulk and then we we'll, and only then we will get the product so this uh, this kinetics that uh, we are going to discuss that uh, how uh, this heterogeneous system kinetics uh, can be uh, can be uh, can be you know uh, used for explaining the immobilized whole cell system the first uh, <coughs> that uh, let us uh, let us discuss about uh, that immobilized what do you mean by immobilized enzyme system normally include I, as I told you, the insoluble immobilized enzyme and soluble products and for and and substrate and products. So, what I what I told that suppose this is a solid matrix and this is insoluble, and here the enzymes are this is the enzyme. So when it fix on the solid matrix, so this will be insoluble. Now when you pass your substrate like this here. And this substrate is soluble. And the, where, where this substrate, when comes here, and this has to diffuse on the surface of the solid matrix, then and only then the it will interact with the enzyme, and product will form. As soon as product is formed, product has to diffuse out to the bulk. So you know that uh, diffusion uh, one of the uh, important aspects 
of the heterogeneous heterogeneous system and that is why we have written that mass transfer resistance plays very important role in case of heterogeneous reaction kinetics now mass transfer resistance may be introduced by the immobilized system which is absent in the free <coughs> free uh, enzyme solution now when you have suppose this is the reactor in this reactor when you have you have uh, this uh, enzyme and substrate so they are when they are soluble they can freely interact with each other there is no diffusion problem but as soon as this is insoluble then substrate has to diffuse from the soluble that uh, from the liquid to the surface of the solid matrix and uh, and then only the reaction as i mentioned before okay the mass transfer resistance occur due to large particle size of the immobilized enzyme and due to inclusion of the enzymes in the polymetric uh, po po polymetric matrix so you know that uh, that mass transfer limitation i can i can i can tell little bit uh, in details suppose they, this is the pore of the solid matrix the inside the enzymes are there so naturally when substrate is there here substrate substrate has to diffuse inside this and then and only then it can interact with the uh, the enzyme and when product form proper product has to diffuse out from the surface of the solid matrix to the bulk this is we call bulk now transportation of substrate in immobilized system how the transportation take place now you look at the uh, you see that the transfer from the bulk liquid to the relatively unbix uh, liquid layer uh, surrounding the immobilized enzyme system so this is the this is the, i can i can I, i i can i can explain on the on the basis of this you see that here here this is the substrate am i right this is the substrate and this is be diffused this is the this is the solid surface and across the solid surface there is a fine layer and this we consider as the unmixed layer you know that so that is exactly what I, we have written here that transfer of the bulk liquid to a relatively unmixed layer liquid layer surrounding the immobilized enzyme and diffusion through the relatively unmixed layer uh, the, then diffuse take place and diffusion from the surface of the particle to the active sites of the enzyme which is inert support material now now you can you can understand the, the here let us assume that this is the enzyme enzyme we have inside that there this is the enzyme so substrate is diffused this is the unmixed layer then diffuses into the surface then it goes inside the solid matrix this is in a row so one and two steps are the external mass transfer resistance and third step is the intra particular mass transfer resistance so this is the sb is the um, <laughs> the bulk uh, substrate concentration and this is the catalytic surface when it goes the uh, surface the, this is ss if you consider this is ss ss means the substrate concentration at the bulk of the solid matrix so you know that this is the gradient that we have it, this is the concentration most of the cases usually less as compared to all cases is less as compared to this uh, uh, bulk substrate concentration and what is the gradient here is b minus ss or is that we have here in this uh, we have considered the substrate concentration at the bulk as s now question comes how you can calculate the external uh, mass transfer resistance now here i want to point out that suppose this is a solid matrix and enzymes are immobilized on here so when you have you have uh, this is the bulk substrate concentration so it is at the surface it like this the, the external surface this is called external surface and when uh, the enzymes are inside this solid matrix we call it internal surface so uh, or you know that uh, suppose it is inside the pore then it is inside 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 the so internal surface so if the enzyme is immobilized on the surface of the insoluble particle the path is only composed of first and second step 
what do you call external mass transfer resistance. So, as for the, as for example, if we consider the nylon solid matrix and with surface is uh, we have little pore inside. So, in that case that you know that uh, the enzymes will remain at the surface of the solid matrix. Now, in that case how you can express the mass transfer? Mass transfer can be expressed as N s equal to K s into A S B minus S. Now, I, I, I told you that uh, here this is the enzyme and the here S is the substrate concentration in the bulk we have substrate concentration S B. So, what is the dragging force we have S B minus S B minus S this is the concentration gradient and this is the mass transfer coefficient this is K S is the mass transfer coefficient A is the interfacial area the how, how much area this mass transfer take place. So, we have what we have written here S B and S are the substrate concentration in the bulk of the solution at this at the at the immobilized enzyme surface respectively and K S is the mass transfer per coefficient unit is the length per unit time and S is the surface area of the immobilized system per unit volume. Per unit volume, uh, unit volume means this is if A is the surface area and volume is B that is the per unit volume that is A is like this. Now, that you know that very interesting thing is that that if you look at the reaction because here the reaction how it is taking place. Suppose this is the enzyme and this is the substrate that is the diffusion and this the S is the substrate concentration. So, what will be the velocity of reaction because the, the velocity of reaction will be V equal to V max S K S plus S. K m plus s, am I right? Not K s, K m plus s. This is the what exactly we have written. This is the velocity of reaction. Now, this is the mass transfer, am I right? Now, under steady state condition, now what do you mean by steady state condition? Steady state condition means rate of substrate diffuse from the uh, bulk to the surface and rate of reaction. If the rate of reaction and rate of diffusion they are same, then and only then substrate concentration. Uh, in the in the surface of the enzyme surface of the solid matrix will be constant. Now, if suppose rate of diffusion is more substrate diffusion is more than rate of reaction then what will happen? The substrate concentration on the surface of the solid matrix will increase. Now, if rate of substrate diffusion is less as compared to rate of reaction then what will happen more substrate will be consumed the substrate concentration at the surface of the solid matrix that keep on decreasing with the with the time. So, steady state condition will be what when rate of mass transfer equal to rate of reaction and how we can write this is how what we can write K s into A is V minus S equal to V max S K m plus S this is how we can write. Now, this shows the relationship between substrate concentration in the bulk of the solution and the surface of the immobilized enzyme. So, this uh, this uh, we can we can visualize from that. Now, this equation if you look at uh, the previous equation that we have what we have this is we have uh, the case what we have we have k s into a what we s b minus s equal to v max s came i guess am i right so now the interesting thing is that suppose uh, k s a and s b you can take common then this will be what s by s b am i right now, here if you divide this with S b then what we can write V max S by S b by K m by S b plus S by S b can I write like this. Now, if we assume X s equal to S by S b then I can write what I can write this is equal to here this equal and, and we can assume that N A D N A what what, what N D A N D A is the dam cooler number. What is the dam cooler number? Dam cooler number you can see this is what 
V max. Am I right? And this is what K s a into S b. Now, what is V max? V max is the maximum. So, the what is the V max? So, I was talking about the N d a. Am I right? What is the N d a? Is the V max into K s a into S b. The this is sorry, this is V max. What is V max? Is the V max is the maximum velocity of reaction, velocity of reaction. Am I right? Now, what is this? By what is the what is the rate of mass transfer? Mass transfer equal to the K S A rate of mass transfer S B minus S. And when it will be maximum? When this will be equal to zero. So this is the what we can do. This is the maximum mass transfer transfer rate. Am I right? So dam coulomb number is nothing but ratio between the maximum velocity of reaction and maximum mass transfer rate. That is what how we can define this. So this is exactly if we if we if we put all this value. We will come across this equation. We will come across this equation that 1 minus x s n d a equal to k uh, x s 1 plus k x s. Now, k is equal to s b by k m, s b by k m that we can easily find it out. Now, uh, from this equation, what we can conclude? This equation that uh, what we can conclude? The con conclusion is that that if N d A is greater than one, then the mass transfer rate is much higher uh, than the reaction. So, the overall overall reaction is controlling by the enzymatic reaction. Let me let me tell you uh, what is the N d A? I told you. What is the N d A? I told you N d A equal to N d A equal to what V max by K s into A into S b. That means the maximum velocity of reaction by maximum rate of mass transfer. Now, if K s is less than 1, that means what? That this should be very high, rate of mass transfer will be very high. So, you are say the substrate is going at the higher rate. Uh, then, as compared to the rate of reaction, then what will happen? The mass transfer is much greater than the reaction, and the overall reaction will controlled by the enzymatic reaction. So, the velocity of reaction. What is the limiting factor here? The limiting factor is the enzymatic reaction because your rate of mass trans uh, mass transfer is more. So, uh, the, the then if you want to want to improve upon the rate of reaction, then what will we shall have to increase the velocity of reaction. And which is nothing but V max S B K M plus S B. Now, what is the next case? Your next case, uh, what is what is that? Is D N D A is greater than one? Then velocity of reaction is more as compared to the mass transfer. So in that case, the velocity of reaction that is not an important factor. That limiting factor. Limiting factor is the mass transfer. What is the mass transfer? Mass transfer is equal to the K S A S into S B. That is the maximum mass transfer. So this is the first order with respect to bulk substrate concentration. This uh, this we can write this expression like this. Then there is a another important term that is associated with the immobilized enzyme system or heterogeneous reaction kinetics. That is, uh, you have effectiveness factor. What is the effectiveness factor? Effectiveness factor is the actual reaction rate, the rate if not showed by the mass transfer. What does it mean? It means the uh, that you know suppose this is a solid matrix and your enzymes are immobilized on the here so here the substrate concentration is s and bulk is the substrate concentration sb now what is the actual rate of reaction depends on the this substrate concentration now when rate uh, uh, divided by rate if not uh, slow by mass transfer that means if 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 the all substrate is available 
uh, at the surface, then uh, that is the if, uh, the if this is not slow by mass transfer. That means here S will be equal to S B and this will be A S. So, so what is the effectiveness factor? Effectiveness factor is the actual rate of reaction divided rate of reaction when there is no mass transfer limitation because all substrate are available for the reaction. So, this is how we can write this is when S is the surface uh, that the concentration S we can write this equation when in the bulk uh, you have uh, all substrate available for the reaction is this and if you write in this form uh, the the final equation we will get in this form because the, I have already prepared this to explain what is K and X is all this thing I explained if you solve it we can find this equation. Now, here I want to point out one thing. Now, if eta eta cannot be more than 1 am I right the the maximum rate of reaction will be what that when all bulk substrate concentration available for the reaction. Now, so eta value will be maximum it will be 1. Now, if it is 1 I can assume that there is no mass transfer limitation problem. So, your heterogeneous reaction system will tends to the homogeneous system. Now, when the eta value is less than 1, if it is less than 1 then what is happening? That means, your, your mass transfer uh, diffusion problem is there. That means, the actual rate of reaction will be less as compared to that of when the all substrate available for the reaction. So, the eta value when, when it is less than 1 then we have mass transfer mass transfer problem. So, here there is no mass transfer problem. I hope you understand that. Now, how you explain that? That you know that if you if you look at excess, what is excess? Again, let me write it excess equal to uh, what I told S by S B. What is L? S is the substrate concentration at this at the surface of the solid matrix S B is the bulk substrate concentration. Now, if you say X equal to 1, then what will happen that concentration at the surface is equal to the bulk substrate concentration. Then eta value will be 1 which indicate there is no mass transfer limitation what exactly I point out before. But when X S is tends to 0 that means that you know that this is very high as compared to this S, S B is very high as compared to S, then the mass transfer is very slow as compared to the reaction rate. I hope you understand that. Now, this is about the external mass transfer. Now, let me switch over to the internal mass transfer when the particles that enzyme present inside the uh, porous porous solid matrix. Now, let us consider uh, the case of enzyme embolized system is spherical particle porous and porous uh, biocatalyst. Now, assumption is that the uh, the particle is isothermal. Isothermal means the control the temperature is constant, and mass transfer occurred by diffusion only, and diffusion rate can be expressed by using the fixed law with constant effective diffusivity. And then the particle is homogeneous, it is the homogeneously is distributed in the in the solution, and particle is the say is at a steady state, and substrate concentration varies with the single spatial variable. So, if we assume all this thing, then then we can we can write this here we can see that you know this is the this is the core of the solid matrix and here the diffusion substrate is diffusing it the how it diffuses to the and let us assume this is a fraction that which is we consider a del r this is the fraction then we can integrate from 0 to r that we can integrate there imagine a thin spherical cell thickness of r, del r located at the radius r from the center okay let us assume that now here the here we can see that in, in the in the rate of input will be what it will be equal to d e s d s is the diffusivity and d s by d r into, into pi r 
the 4 pi r square because since we are considering the spherical uh, sphere, sphere spherical particle the surface area of the sphere is about 4 pi r square so this is r plus del r and the, and what is the output that you have this is r you know that uh, this is r we get ds equal to r that is the rate of generation is equal to 0 because this since substrate is diffusion take place rate of consumption I can assume minus r is equal to this this is the r is into volume and this is this is 4 pi r square into del r is the nothing but volume and rate of accumulation at the steady state condition is 0 and des is the effective diffusivity of the substrate s substrate is the concentration of s in the particle and r is the distance. Then what is our equation that we have that you know during the reactor analysis we use that equation for material balance equal to rate of input equal to plus generation equals the output plus consumption plus accumulation. Now here what is the rate of input this is des into ds by r 4 pi r squared what is r plus del r and what is the output or that generation generation no substrate generation take place that is equal to 0 and what is the output this is the output as r and then uh, this is the uh, rate of reaction the r the minus r squared into 4 pi r squared into del r and a rate of accumulation that should be equal to 0 then we will finally reach this equation. And now, if you divide this uh, 4 pi del r, it gives this equation. So, we will come across this equation and, uh, and then from this we can find out this equation. When del r tends to 0, then we can put a limit, then we can, we can find this equation there. Now, finally, we come across this steady state uh, so that cell mass balance is uh, like this under steady state condition this d del uh, this uh, this value this will be equal to minus r r square and this uh, if we now we can differentiate this then we will get this kind of equation and finally we come back to this equation the a differential equation representing the diffusion reaction of the spherical catalyst here. Now, finally, we come across this equation of the steady state this uh, des d, d, d 2 s by d r 2 plus 2 by r d s by d r equal to minus r and this equation I can write in this form and then we can put the boundary condition at the r equal to uh, r smaller equal when equal to bigger s will be equal to s b that we have seen that uh, that uh, that uh, that thing that uh, this here is the sp and when here is the s so when this r equal to r then s will be equal to rc when r equal to 0 this rate of mass transfer will be equal to 0. Now if we assume now by uh, non-dimensional parameters if we assume like this now previously this we assume at the x s but you know in this case we assume this as the s bar to understand uh, differently that uh, s equal to for internal diffusion this is s by s b the same thing only we, we use the terminology or r bar equal to a small r by capital R then this equation the previous equation can be rewrite in this form. So finally, we come across this equation. This is the equation that we have. And again, if we put the boundary condition, this uh, r bar equal to zero, then d s bar by d r bar equal to zero, r bar equal to one, s bar equal to one. Then this uh, equation will come across this particular equation. Now finally, the right hand side. If you look at the right hand side, this is the, the, this one. I can write this equation in this form, and this is equal to r square b and d k m. You can take it out. This I can write s by s b one plus that 
uh, the, the just we divide by S B, we can get this equation that uh, we can write this equation like this. Then uh, and the right hand side again we can write in this form and uh, what is the, what is this form? This is if you look at this is this is constant what we have written before. Now, this is equal to S bar S by um, I told you told you S bar equal to what? S by S b am I right. So, we can this is equal and beta equal to what? K m by S b. So, we can write in this form and finally, we come across this equation is the 9 9 uh, phi square then s bar by this in the point is what is phi? This is called file modulus. Huh? This is phi square equal to this and the, uh, this is equal to mass uh, ma maximum reaction rate and divided by maximum mass transfer rate in case of intra particulate matters. Then this is then phi, phi square equal to this is we can write in this form. This is the final equation I can write. So, uh, now we, if we go back to the effectiveness coefficient I we have explained before that is the what is the effectiveness factor that observed reaction rate divided by rate if not if not slowed by the mass transfer. So, uh, in this this can be explained like this when there is no mass transfer limitation. The power that means that this is actually the ratio of the performance of heterogeneous system divided by performance of the homogeneous system. As I told you that when eta equal to 1 that means your heterogeneous system is equal to homogeneous system. Now, when it is less than 1 that means your, uh, your how then there we have the mass transfer limitation problem in this. This is how the eta can be explained. Now, this is uh, this uh, we can we can write that in case of 0 order reaction that beta tends to 0 then eta equal to 1 that I shall explain to you and eta can be correlated with thi modulus in this particular uh, equation. Now, this equation this uh, graph tell us the correlation between eta and uh, phi value this is psi modulus and this is the effectiveness factor. Now, if you find out if you, if you point 0.3 that is you know that it is the rate of your eta is equal to 0 and but if it is more than 0 0.3 and then you know your eta value is less than uh, less than 1 that is your mass transfer problem is more. Now, here if beta is equal to 0 it considered as 0 order and when beta is tends to infinity it is considered as a first order reaction. Now, finally, we come across that you know in many practical cases that you know it is difficult to evaluate the kinetic parameters k m and v max which is Michaelis maintained constant and maximum velocity of reaction. So, uh, a way of circumvent that uh, problem is to apply the observable thyl modulus uh, sometimes called the wise modulus this is equal to phi equal to V, v p by a p what is v p volume of the particle a p is the area of the particle this is r s is the observed rate of reaction and d e s is the diffusivity and s b is the bulk surface concentration and it is called intrinsic kinetic parameters. Now, this is the, the final thing that we have if phi value is less than from the figure we have seen that if the less than 0 0.3 the eta is close to 1, then uh, the limiting reason is the reaction and mass transfer resistance is negligible. Now, when eta value is uh, greater than 3, then this eta is inversely proportional to phi value, then it will be diffusion resistance. The mass transfer resistance will play the very important role. So, in conclusion in this lecture what we try to uh, learn that uh, how uh, the heterogeneous reaction kinetics can be explained. Now, heterogeneous reaction kinetics the substrate has to diffuse from the bulk to the surface of the solid matrix then uh, only then reaction takes place. 
two type of uh, uh, diffusion phenomena that works. One is the external mass transfer and the internal mass transfer. Now, how this uh, the, the two parameters we have come across, one is damp polar number and that is the effect impedance factor. What is damp polar number? Damp polar number is the maximum velocity of reaction divided by the maximum mass transfer. What is the effect impedance factor? Rate of reaction, actual rate of reaction divided by rate of reaction when there is no mass transfer limitation. So, when eta value is 1, your heterogeneous uh, homo heterogeneous system tends to homogeneous system. When, when eta value is less than 1, that means there is a mass transfer problem. How it is related with high modulus that we try to explain in this uh, particular uh, lecture. Thank you very much.